Let's run it, baby. All right, everybody, you guys know what it is. It's the one of the only, the American Troll podcast, broadcasting live and directly from North Hollywood, California. My name is Gil, and I am the American Troll. Today, co host with me is none other but. What's cracking like and with the booty smacking? It's the one and only your favorite photographer, Netorious One, wearing all black, so we killing the game, baby. Everybody oh. talking about us, but hey, let's keep it pushing, baby. We love it. Let's go. Yeah, so so before we get started and I introduce our, our next guest, I want to give a big shout out to my man Gold Toes for, you know, making the link <laughs> over here. Brown and black, that's what we're doing out here. It's, it's, all, it's all love, homie. This is how we do it, man. So with that being said, appreciate you, Gold Toes. Shout out to you, homeboy. Shout out to GT toes. Digital, carnal. Yes, sir. That's what up, Gold Toes? Our next guest is an American rapper from Vallejo, California. He's better it's known for his affiliation with a fellow Vallejo rapper, Mac Dre, and his label, Thiz Latin. Everybody in the in the, in the Bay Area, everybody there knows exactly who this who this man is. Jay Diggs, what's going on, my man? What's up with it? What's up with it? I, I yeah, it's Diggs, a homie. pleasure, man. Thank you for having me. No, man, you, you pulled up, homie. Well, you flew up over here. Yeah, that's one thing I do. I pull up. That's right. Anywhere yeah, in America, yeah. believe that. You, you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So let's just uh, let's just kind of run run into this, man, because a lot of like um, our uh, our fan base. May not know your full story, you know. So, where were you born and raised, at, player? Well, I'm from I'm from the Bay Area. My home is Vallejo, California. You know, and uh, I've been in this in this music game for probably uh, shit, almost 20 years now. You know, I come from a, up under, like you said, Mac Dre. The Thiz Nation is our is our label that Thiz we started. Nation, right? Yeah, Thiz Nation. So we, you know, we came pushed the whole hyphy movement back in the day. I actually was the first man to jump on top of a car and do what you call ghost ride. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I started that. I started. Well, I, you're, I, you're the original yeah. ghost rider, man. Ghost ride. It was ghost walking at first, but when you every time you see somebody jump on top of a car and they ride a car like a surfboard, yeah, that, I started that. You're, you you're, go, you're the guy the yeah. insurance companies are looking for. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. okay, all right. when you when you ghost ride the whip, obviously you just leave it in neutral. No. No, nah, that's what you don't. You got to have it in park so it can idle up. You know what I mean? If you leave okay. it in neutral, it's going to eventually stop. I mean, not excuse me. You got to have it in drive so it can it can go ahead and, and, okay. and idle up and keep going. So you yeah. really want to catch a cool little pace that's something you're comfortable with. No, okay. it's not going to be going downhill. That's what I'm 20, yeah, some dudes, then they, didn't, they didn't did some destructive shit um, um, trying to ghost ride a car. Yeah. But it, it, it was really, you know, like they, we had a, a DVD that was on Netflix uh, years ago. It was called Ghost Riding 101. Uh, uh, DJ Vlad put it out. So, I, okay. you know, I, I, I started in that and I kind of like taught people. Yeah. The real correct way to do it, because it was a lot of people getting hurt and shit back in the day when we first started doing that shit. So what what uh what made you ghost ride the whip, player? Uh, you know it, you know what it was is it's actually before ghost ride it was ghost walking. Dudes was getting out the car and they were just like walking on the walking side. Of the, you Sorry. know, and so and at the time I was fresh out of prison. I was really on on some other shit. I was happy to be home, and it was a whole movement, a hyphy movement starting. So I was just doing the regular ghost walking one day, and I was like. I used to do dips in prison, you know what I mean? I was already right. working out, so I got between the door and the hood while the car was work, was driving, and I just started doing dips first. So I was doing <laughs> dips while the car was rolling, okay. and, and I, at first I was do, I did that a few times and got comfortable with it, and the next thing you know, I just did a dip and I went all the way over. So I, I did a dip and took my feet over and stepped on the hood and, and let it roll a little bit and got comfortable with Every it. Did it a few times. Exactly. Right. And, and exactly. And I and I and I did it uh I did it on, on one of our DVDs way back in the day. We had a DV, a Bay Area D V D called uh twenty three one oh nine Exhibition of Speed. And that was all about uh, the Bay Area with driving and side shows and all the shit. So I had did that one maneuver where I sat on the car and was dancing on the car. And uh, Mac Dre had did a song. He did a song after that, and he he did he quoted that line: "Ghost ride the whip ghost while dancing on the hood." Yeah. And you know what I mean. So and that was just one of the things. Like if you ever ghost, you can you can YouTube Jay Diggs ghost rides. You'll see. I didn't ghost rode the Bay Bridge. I did all kind of shit. I, yeah. And, and then after that, it took a life of its own. Yeah, it did. Everybody, right. I, I looked up not too long ago. She was on the Simpsons and all type of shit. It was, <laughs> yeah, Ghost Rider. Car. So you know, talk to me uh, somewhat about the Bay Area, like like that kind of stuff, because it seems like the Bay Area is very influential, believe it or not, because that's what kind of what's going on out here now in L.A. Everybody's getting the cars or doing the burnout thing. Talk well, to me, like well, you know, know how that we, is. Out there. We we are, we're the home of the independent. We always had our own movement. You know, we always was doing. When everybody else was going right, we was going left. You know, that's just how the Bay Area is designed. So we always, you know, even with this music shit, you know, everybody was was going out, reaching, looking for deals. We had the independent move. We, we really started that independent grind, having your own um, ownership of your music and putting your shit started from selling in the trunks and, and finding independent distribution companies to put it out for us and, and getting $7 and $8 a copy when Michael Jackson then was only getting a dollar. 
Okay. You feel me? So we was we was doing this shit for years and years. And we always had our own our own style, our own grind. You know, it's a lot of things that, that that goes on in the world that the Bay Area never even adapted to. Like gangbanging. Right. You feel me? Gangbang took over the world. And it started in California, but right up the street in California, the Bay Area, we don't crip with blood. And that's people like, damn, that shit went to New York, everywhere. How y'all right here in California, next to the home of gangbanging. Right. And Oakland, Richmond, Vallejo, San Francisco, this whole area, y'all don't crip or blood. And that's just how we are, bro. We are our own. Kept your identity. We definitely, definitely. And trust me, we had to fight for it. It was times when when I had to jump out on little niggas in my neighborhood. Like, hold on, bro. Y'all take, when y'all get these flags up, we don't do oh, this. They were, yeah, yeah we don't, yeah. We had, the rap music and Exactly, else, yeah. Right? We, had to, we had to put a stop to that shit times. It was times when the youngsters, my son, his generation, we had to, hey, hey, nah. Uh -huh. They were still trying to yeah, we don't we don't do that shit, and, and and it never caught like that. Like you know, like I said, they would try and had to start little crews with the flag. So what you what you guys represent out there as far as, as far neighborhoods? As just neighborhoods. It's neighborhoods. Yeah, I come from the country club crest. My my neighborhood. Man, we have crews. My crew was called the Romper Room Crew. Um, we uh they did a story on us in a BET American Gangster. I seen that. They, they, they did a story and um you know I got in trouble young bank robbers. You know I was a suspect in over twenty bank robberies at nineteen years you old. You finally got arrested for those, right? Yeah, yeah. So I went to jail. I went to jail for bank uh for conspiracy and attempted to commit bank robbery in ninety two. Mac Dre was my co-defendant. Oh shit, oh. Mac Dre was the co-defendant. Yeah, Mac Dre was my co-defendant. That was your boy. Yeah, so he he actually went to jail for not telling on me. Mac Dre never bribed no banks, wasn't into robbing banks, but um, his crew was. And he, and uh, he just got caught up in a cold situation at, at a time um, when we was already uh, hot for the bank robbery, so it was already a, a big, um, it was going on real big. And back in, in the early 90s, it was it was like wildfire. Every night on the, on the news, you was hearing about bank robberies and, and all these different right, and it started from really started from pizza parlors. Then it went on to bank robberies. That's what I was going to ask you. So you guys were robbing pizza pizza parlors, right? And mm -hmm. what happened? Um, I mean, you've already got convicted for this or whatnot, right? So we're talking about something that happened a long time ago. What was the difference from going to, you know, robbing pizza places is one thing. Robbing federally insured yeah. banks that's that's a that's a bigger a bigger game. So. Uh what was? Well, how did you guys jump from that to that? It's the same way you jump from selling rocks to selling keys. The oh, same. Okay. It, it's graduation. Trying to double up. <laughs> it's graduation. Okay, right. You know when you when you once you start doing something and you get comfortable with it and you feel like you mastered it, it's time to take it to another level. So we was youngsters. We was kids. We thought we we thought we knew. Right, what the hell we was doing, and we did. We got a lot. We got away with a lot. I, I, I robbed banks. My homeboys robbed banks. We got a lot. We spent a lot of money. Blew a lot yeah. of money. Had a lot of fun. But at the end of the day, we had to pay for it. Yes, sir. And I, I got homeboys that's still sitting in jail still from 1992. Oh, I was one of the lucky ones because yeah. I didn't catch an actual bank robbery. I got caught. They, they. Yeah. I had a dude wearing a wire on me that. They, really? Yeah, yeah. I had rolled a whole, on you. Yeah, yeah. They caught us before yeah. we ran up in a bank. But that's because we noticed that they was following. It's a whole little situation. Well, it's it's amazing, and you know better than I how how uh, intricate the the feds are, the police are, how long they will sit there and investigate you and take. They're so patient. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, definitely. How long were they investigating you guys? Um, they was so they was on us for probably about uh I, I want to say probably like close to a year. So they did a uh what, what when the robberies was going on um. They didn't have a clue at first, so they did a show. They did a uh, unsolved mysteries came in. They did a story. They did a show on unsolved mysteries on us, and it's crazy because they actually had an actual clip. I never forget this. I was uh, the, the night that the unsolved mystery show came on, so everybody was talking about it in our in our town because we knew that they filmed it in Vallejo. Like, damn, unsolved mysteries came here and filmed the show. So they came and filmed the show, and the night that they showed it, now this is the old school when you know, dude with the with the voice and yeah, everything. For yeah, for sure. So the night that they showed the show, um, I had. Actually came to my mom's house that night, not even thinking about that show that night. And I walk in, and my mom, my dad, my little sister, they all watching the show. And they're like, my mom, like, oh look, look, this is the show on the on the dudes that's been robbing the barracks in the Bay Area. So when I come in, I'm watching it. When she said, the hair on my neck stand up, and I, and I'm looking at the show. So while they showing the show, they show an actual clip of me running oh, up in a. Shit. Back then, it was a, a Hercules. It was a Hercules. Round table pizza. Okay. So they showed an actual clip of me running up in. We had masks on me and another. But you know that's you. I know it's me. So I'm watching my mom watch the show. My palms is sweating. I'm like, oh my god. Right now. I'm 51 right now. No, no, I'm talking about. Oh, at the, doing at the time. Yeah. At the time, I was 
19. Okay, you're okay. 19. Damn. Yeah, I was 19 at the time when it happened. So I'm sitting there, I'm sweating. I'm like, oh my, to me, I'm looking at me. I got a, I got a, I had a, actually had a white ski mask on at the time. Right. So I'm, and I had a little a, a zip up jumpsuit. So I, I'm looking at me, I'm like, I see me. So I'm looking at my parents and I'm like, oh, do they see what I'm seeing? And, and at the time they didn't, you know, to them, it was okay. like a movie. They didn't know. They didn't know at the time, and, uh, and my mom stood by my side the whole time. And then when I finally, when we finally got caught up in our case, was, our case was kind of crazy. Like I said, we had an informant wore a wire. We had the feds follow us from the bay to Fresno. I and caught was my this, case. Is this a guy that you knew, like personally? Yeah, he as, actually was a, a homie. Yeah, he actually was a car thief. He was the dude that was stealing cars for me to rob banks. Oh, his, shit. Yeah, yeah. His name is Corey Dunn. Yeah, yeah. Rest in peace, is Corey Dunn. He, he, he passed away. But um, um, so he he was he was he was actually my car. He was my connect. Right. So and, and so what happened was the story was just I just ran yeah, to you. Run it. So um at the time we had just did uh Dre Mac Dre was was fresh. He was hot rapper in California at the time. He, we had just did our first show um outside of the Bay Area, which with Ice Cube and Dub C in the Mad Circle. So it was in Fresno. It was a big show in Fresno. This was our biggest show. Dre went crazy. So um after the show we met some little females out there. And we was already had toward the Bay Area with bank robbery. So I'm like, okay, we're gonna go back. Let's let's I tell my little cousin Kilo, let's come back to Fresno and let's hit a lick out here in Fresno. So we had planned to do this shit. So we're like, okay, we're gonna go back to Fresno. They they was virgin territory. So the morning that me and Kilo was supposed to go, I was in the studio with Mac Dre working on some shit. So Kilo called my little cousin, like, come on, you ready to go? I'm like, yeah, let's do it. So Mac Dre, like, where y'all going? Like, I'm finna go to Fresno. Oh, I want to go. Well, you know, I met a little bitch out there. I'm, I'm trying to go. I'm like, nah, Dre, we finna go take care of some business. And well, I'll stay at the hotel, man. I know what time it is. And we'll, so I'm like, man, but fuck it, man. Come on. So we, you know, he know what we going to do. So we like, okay, he going to stay at the hotel with little chicks and we finna go. So I get my car thief. His thing is he going to come out there and he going to steal a car while we out there. We going to hit the lick, jump in my rental car, you know, another day. Uh, so we get out there. When we get out to Fresno, um, and um, we spend the night out there, and the next morning, we, we go. We finna go hit the lick. I got my dude go steal a car for us. Me and my dude, Kilo, we gonna hit the bank, come around the corner, jump in a, in a, in a, uh, in a getaway car, and leave. When we pull up in the bank, we finna, I'm literally putting the ski mask on my face, and, and I'm finna open the door to get out, and I see a news van across the street. I'm like, oh, I, I had that same yeah, look. Yeah, like, what fuck the, the yeah. news, you know, this the one that got the... The, the satellite, satellite on top, right. yeah. So I'm like, oh shit, hold on, it's a van, you know, it's yeah, new. Yeah, like, where the yeah. cameras at? So I'm we sitting there looking for the cameras, and while we there, back then the feds had these little Aries, like, like uh, I think they was Ford Aries or something cars they used to drive with little and straight antennas on the back. Right. So I'm seeing these little cars, and my little cousin Kilo, he's like, man, you see these little? But we downtown, so it's kind of like, yeah, but we downtown. He's like, man, I keep seeing these little cars. So long story short, we shut it down. I'm like, man, something ain't right. I mean, feel this, right. this, 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 this van, this van ain't moved. It got tinted windows on it, and the camera ain't out. Like, so, so, right, so we shut it down. So I tell the driver, my driver, uh, the one that's still the car. I was like, bro, pull, take us back to the hotel. So he like, man, come on, man. You know I needed this it's little. Wired, he, he got a whole wire. This was this was before the cell phone wires. He had an actual yeah, wire, 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 body wire on. So he um he take us back to the hotel. We go pick up Mac Dre from the hotel. And uh, we get on the freeway on the 99, leaving Fresno to go to uh, back to the Bay Area. Now, mind you, he keeps the stolen car. He like, well, fuck it, I stole it, I'm gonna keep it. So we in my car is me, Mac Dre, and my cousin. So he pulls over on the side of the 99 and comes back and asks me for some weed out of nowhere, uh, you know, on the freeway. So I give him some weed. He pulls off. When I'm getting ready to pull off, Mac Dre on the passenger side, he looks past me on the freeway and he like, like, Cuddy, I just seen Detective Ritz. Now we two hours away from our neighborhood, and he see a detective that's from our town on the freeway. So I'm like, Dre, you you sure? He like, bro, I'm telling you, I just seen Detective Rich, and in Kilo, he in the back. He like, man, I think I seen him too. I'm like, oh, bro, man. something ain't so right. You guys getting followed. So instead of going straight on the freeway, the 99, you know, it got a little patches where you can go across the middle. I shot across the middle patch of the freeway and start going the other way, and cars just start. 36, I think they had 36 surveillance cars on us that was all waiting for us to rob a bank. Like, they was literally lined up everywhere. Wait, they was going to let us go in the bank. 
and come out. They would have killed us for Some sure. Shit from heat. Yeah, they would have killed Jeez. us because we come out. There ain't no freeze. Like Especially we just robbed the bank. Oh, yeah, so they was they was planning on killing. They was gonna let us run up in the bank, bro, and they was gonna wait for us to come out. Yeah, get you. And, and they was yeah. going. So um, they end up taking us down right there, and at the, so we didn't do nothing. Hadn't even got out the car, but right. still got charged with a conspiracy and attempted bank robbery. Conspiracy was there, but with temp, we like what the yeah. fuck that. We going to trial. Right. So we went to trial. Like they came and asked Mac Drake, look, bro, we know you ain't robbing banks. We know you the rapper and the crew, all the shit. You wanna go home? Just let us know the digs and kilo. We know we got they suspecting these other robberies. We finna press these other charges on them. You might as well go home and get your career. We heard you got a big deal from Jive on the table. Running game on. Yeah. Nah, nah, they was really trying to tell him. And he did. He had a deal from Jive records on the table. Shit. Like he could have literally said, Man, I'm out of here. But he didn't. He went to trial with us knowing, and I, I'll say this, to, to this day, Mac Dre is the only person I know in my life that went to prison for something he definitely never did and had nothing to do with, for just keeping it 100 and not telling on his friends. That's rare. Period. Like, he had no involvement in our crimes. He could have easily said, yep, yeah, that was them. Yeah, they, come on, bro, let me go. I got it. Half a million sitting on the table with Jive Records right oh. now. I'm 19 years old. Let's go. So when was the first time you and Mac Dre met? How far do you guys um, go back? We was teenagers. We was we was we was in high school, 16, like 16 years old. So you went to the same high school Six, with him? 16. Actually, he went to Hogan High. He went with my cousin Kilo. I went to I went to Vallejo High. I went to another high school. Okay. And um, but we was in the same town, and they brought him. See, our neighborhood was the Crest. So Dre didn't really live in the Crest, our yeah. neighborhood, when he was coming up. But he was just close to to dudes in our neighborhood. So my one of my other close homies really brought Dre to the crash, and he just adapted to us. And it was he, all love. Yeah, it was went. just all all love. Like yeah. it's, he 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 became us. Okay. So we we you know we was different. We, we was our crew was only ten people. You know what yeah. I mean? We don't have no extended crew or nothing. We ten homeboys from the same neighborhood, the romper room crew, and we. Went through shit. We went to prison together, and I ain't gonna lie. We had two. It was twelve. It's down to ten now because we had two rats that didn't make it. <laughs> you know, right. other way. I, 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 was now, how, how did that? How did you take that? And when did you very first hear that your uh, guy who's uh, the getaway driver had a wire? Uh we 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 figured it out. We had to figure. We figured it out when we got back to the station. So they arrested us. Now, mind you, they arrest us and take us back to the station. So we in there. They put us. Uh, they put us all in the same holding cell. And we all in the holding cell. So when we when we get there, we already said, you know, we already know what it is. Lawyer, we're nothing to talk about. So we all, they they come get us all one by one. We all come back out within two minutes. Ain't nothing to talk about. Right. So we we're in up. there now. We like, well, where's Corey? So we in there like, well, how the hell? You know, it's thirty six cars on us. He was right in front of us. Where's Corey? How they ain't brought Corey in or nothing, right? So we still now we starting to play little situations back in our head. It was going on prior, and it's like, hold on. Remember he did this? And then I, my biggest thing that I did that threw me off is when he stole a car this time in Fresno. Like, he stole several cars from me for robberies. Right. But this particular car, when he stole it, when I got in the car, the first thing I looked at was the ignition, and it was just like eight out. It was blue out. It was way different than the way he used to bust the steering column and shit like kind this. But this was like... How, what, how did you do that? Like, it was just eight out, and you just had, like, some needle nose. I'm like, bro, y'all ain't never seen him steal no car like that. But I'm thinking to myself, this is what I thought to myself, but I'm not tripping. So when we sit in the cell, and we trying to figure out where Corey at, and we playing back some of the shit he did, like when, at the time, we was on the freeway, and, and he got off the freeway on some emergency shit to go use a cell phone. This, I mean, yeah, this was a, a pay phone. This was before cell phones was cracking. Right. So he went to go use a pay phone, and we like, man, we on the freeway, why would you... And we come to find out in the paperwork, he had lost him because the way he was driving and these motherfuckers was paging him. Like, where the fuck are y'all? Where the fuck are y'all? And he put the feds back on us. Oh, shit. So, Damn. so How he, did you know that guy for? Um, I know him a couple years and I just, I met him through another homeboy just on some in the game shit. Like he was a car thief. So he, so when I, when I first started fucking with him, I knew he was a car thief and I told him, look, bro, I need you to give me some cars. This is what they for. And I'm going to pay you hella good. You right. know, you got to keep your mouth closed. This ain't no regular, just steal a car shit. Like you're going to see these motherfuckers on the news. Right. So right. I need you. To, and so what happened was, what ended up happening was he caught another case behind some domestic violence mm. shit with one of his girlfriends was sitting in the county jail. Uh, he had left a print, one of their first leads, he left a print on the car. 
So when they caught him in the county jail, they pulled up on him and said, hey, look, we know you ain't stealing no cars. I mean, you ain't robbing no banks, but you stealing the cars for the motherfuckers robbing the banks. You a car thief. You've been a car thief since you was 12. So he was sitting there fighting his case, and then they wouldn't give him a bail and all this shit. So now they start waving his case over his head and all this shit with his girlfriend. And he does. This was the first time he break. Yeah, I've been stealing cars for Jay Diggs yeah. and the romper room. That's who have been behind the pizzas in the bank robberies for the last year and a half. And and now they like, well, okay, we need you to wear a wire. You got to get him. You can't just tell us. So it, they end up. Let, I didn't even know he had caught this case. They end up letting him out put a wire on him and it was crazy because he had wore a wire and me and him when he got out he getting at me like bro me and my baby mama fell out i gotta get a place to stay my money fucked up can i drive for you now he taking another step so this was his whole thing before he was just stealing the cars and dropping them off to me now he get at me on some i need some extra bread can i drive for you driver yeah he t- i'm fucked up and whoop, yeah. whoop. so now i'm like okay i'm gonna go to fresno i'll take you to fresno and you can get a car in Fresno. You could drive for us. I'll give you some good bread and we'll, we'll help you out the whole time. He got the feds on me. Some shit out the yeah. movies. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. Were you like, were, were you really disappointed? You kind of. I was fucked that? up, bro. That shit broke my heart. And that's why I go so hard on rats. Like, I'm yeah. like, because my whole thing was, bro, yeah, of course I was doing some bullshit. But if you in the game, bro, and you are committing crimes and you doing all this shit and you get caught and you turn around and you give another man up to do your time, mm. bro, like that's what he basically did to us. Like he got caught on some other shit instead of going some to do his time, that. some bullshit at that. Bro, like we, he he wiped the whole neighborhood out after that. that uh, he could have went and did a couple months in the county and took his that's little, bullshit. yeah, yeah, that's or bullshit. took some domestic violence classes or something. <laughs> you feel me? But instead, instead of washing people up. Yeah, instead he, he yeah. threw us away. So, so when that happened to me and I went to the feds, my first thing was, bro, I hate all rats. Like, so that became who I was Instilled people in you, yeah right? that anybody, anybody knew me in jail like don't bring no rats around me bro where your paperwork at so when I hit the compound that was my first thing when you came around me bro where your PSI at? come in nah go get your shit let me see where that. you from you from the bay go get your shit okay go, so you, 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 gonna, you, you were running that, that oh yeah paperwork. no yeah I don't play that I don't play any, anybody any don't really do that no 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 Jay Diggs does no no <laughs> they'll tell you they'll tell you about me they'll tell you about me bro I'm wanting to know and even all the way to this day all in my music everybody yeah. will tell you bro I don't play that rat shit with no man I didn't have to cancel out my own peoples bro I don't care I, if it's my child my kids know if you do something in the streets and you tell on another man your ass ain't good they, I instilled that in them. So my kids know, like, you, this is the choices you make. Like, this is how I had to stand on it. You ain't going to jeopardize your family life because you're doing some bullshit, and now you want to decide to become a rat. Are you surprised that the number of, uh, especially, like, in the rappers, since you're in the rap industry, the number of rappers that are coming out that are snitching in their, in their, in their peoples nowadays? I, I'm not surprised, bro. I'm not surprised. And, and, and I'm not surprised because... I, I I went to like I said I went to the feds young and 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 I'm sitting in there and then I'm seeing motherfuckers in the mafia doing it I'm seeing yeah. Crips doing it I'm seeing Bloods doing it I'm seeing Bay Area some North Daniel Serain I'm seeing everybody they're supposed to be stand up and I'm like damn is it really just a chosen few and that's what it is bro yeah. at the end of the day there's only going to be a chosen few that really live by that law yes, sir. there's going to be a whole bunch of people that talk that shit but that really be in that position where somebody comes to you and say, hey, you got a choice. You want to go to jail or you want to tell on your friend? It's not a lot of people that could do that. My friend did that. Right. He could have sent me to jail and went home. With money. Yeah, and a career. He With lost career. his career for five years and had to start come back and start all over. It ain't too many people that go to jail these days and come home and you see them with their co-defendants. You ever feel guilty about that? I, I, felt, uh, I, felt, I felt a lot of guilt behind that. Me and my cousin Kilo, and that's why we went so hard for Dre after he passed. Man, that's his chain, right? Damn near 20 years on since the day Dre died, pretty much, this chain, everywhere I go, no matter where, every day of my life, like everything I do it really is in the name of Thea's Nation. And I don't make no money off of Mac Dre. That's what people need to understand. A lot of people think, oh, Diggs took over the label and he got rich off of Mac Dre. Mm-mm. I don't make a quarter off of Mac Dre's name. Mac Dre's mother, Mac Wanda, y'all can look this up and Google her, go to her Instagram and follow her. She 
owns Mac Dre's estate. She's a very, very beautiful lady. She's a very beautiful, powerful businesswoman. She's running his estate. She takes care of it. Uh, his daughter, Trinae, that's that's my niece. They are in total control of everything that Mac Dre does. Everything I that's do, I do on I do on the yeah. love and strength. I'm the face of this Diz Entertainment shit because after Dre passed, I stepped up like, yeah, it's still tees up yeah, and we're going to rep this shit for my cutty forever. So a lot of people took that and said, oh, damn, but they seek I'm doing good. I do good on my own. Yes, sir. I own my own music. I'm not even signed to Diz Entertainment. So do that math. Really? I got this shit all over my body. I'm not signed to Diz Entertainment. I got my own. They ain't cutting your leg, checks. Not, nothing. No, I do everything I do for Diz Entertainment in the name of Mac Dre because that was my friend prior to my co-defendant and all this shit. Yeah, definitely. I do all the shit. Anything they call and ask me to do, I'm going to do it. I'll be there for them. All this. We got Mac Dre Day coming up right now, July 5th. Every year we do Mac Dre Day. We started that the first year that he passed. Where you guys do that at? Um, San Francisco. How, I San, you know about that. San Francisco. It goes crazy. Right. It goes. It goes crazy. Yes, yeah, it's, it's every year the whole baby out. We, Isn't it amazing that uh, how, how long has Mac Dre been gone now? Two thousand four. How? It's almost. It's almost. Uh, what? Twenty years. Mm -hmm. No. Right. It's almost twenty years. And Mac Dre still has that love in the base, still bring people together. Mm -hmm. what, what, what kind of individual was he? Like, beyond the rapper, beyond what people saw on, on any kind of, you know, small clips. When you were sitting there with Mac Dre and you are sitting with, with your homies, what kind of person was he? Uh, take Mike Epps and put some pimping in Mike Epps, put some game in Mike <laughs> <Okay>. Epps. <laughs> <laughs> put some really? game in Mike Epps. Really? Yeah, and you got Mac Dre, bro. He was a comedian, bro. On the on the low, Dre yeah. was a funny dude. He was a character, bro. Like he he like he he was just he was a joker all the time. Like he told jokes. And actually what's crazy about it is, I swear to God, you know, we've been we've been having this movie. We've been going through a lot of shit, but trying to get these um these movies um done. But we've been having this movie on the table uh, uh, uh about doing this Mac Dre movie for years. Yeah. And I swear, probably about ten years ago. I talked to Mike Epps about that. Like, bro, oh, we need you to do Dre. Like, you yeah. is Dre character. Dre was hella funny, silly. Like, really? He, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, he was, he was, he was and, and actually, we call him, his nickname is Furley. His nickname, we call him um, Furley. His nickname is Furley? Furley. Furley. Now, do you know, you remember? Mr. Furley? Exactly. <laughs> Three's Company. Three's Company. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That that was that's Dre's nickname, bro. Because Dre was he 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 had a, he had sometimes he had a goofy the side. Don't know about Mr. Furley. Yeah, a lot of people. So he was the owner of the building. It was all his AKAs. Mr. Furley, the owner of the building. Uh, Jack shit. Tripper, two bitches with yeah, me. Yeah, that yeah. was them was all Dre. You know, them was us. There was all the little aliases that he used. So yeah, we um, he was a funny dude, bro. He, that was definitely he was he was he was a character, bro. He'd come in and he'll 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 make a joke off the top. Walk me through that day where either you got the phone call or you got the word that uh Mac Dre has lost his life oh wow that's crazy it's crazy because I just did I just got this exact question asked to me <laughs> so um this was um I was so mind you okay so Dre had a show in Kansas City right now I'm fresh out I'm on federal parole I've never been to Kansas City I couldn't even go out of, out of state yet so um Dre had already started a move. He had been home five years. They started a movement. The Bay Area had a dope ass movement in the Bay Area. So it was it was Dre. It was uh it was some other rappers from our label, Doobie, PSD, then it was Yuck Mouth. It was a bunch of rappers from the Bay that had a show out in Kansas City. Dre was the headliner. Um, so I couldn't go. I took I took some of them to the airport and all the shit. And um at the time back then, I was a pimp. So me and my girls was on the road. I was literally laying in the bed. I had two girls on the side of me, literally laying in the Where, bed. Damn. Yeah. Okay. And I and I, um, I got the phone call and it was about four four in the morning, Cali time. Right. And when I when I looked at the phone, it happened to be my little cousin Kilo, who was actually me and Drake. We all we bond. So Kilo, when I seen the number, I. I froze up because Kilo don't call me this time of night. And the last time he called Lord me knows. this, right hand of God, the last time he called me this time of morning was like three months prior. And he called me looking for Dre because they had just had a rumor that Mac Dre had died. They had a big rumor going around saying that Dre had uh, OD'd on three pills and blah, blah, blah. He died to the point we had to go around like radio stations like to clear the rumor. Man, Mac Dre ain't dead. You think three pills can kill Mac Dre? And, you know, he doing it. So this just happened three three months ago. So I get the call and I'm looking. I'm like, Kilo. So I'm answering the phone. What's up, Cuddy? What's, what's going on? 
He like, bro, they just killed Mac Dre in, in, in the Cuddy in, in, in Kansas City. I'm like, bro, don't call me with this bullshit again. No, bro, no, it's true, it's true. I'm like, what? So I'm like, at the time, I'm, I'm literally lodged between two girls. So I'm like, when he's told me this, I'm like, I don't know how, but I got out the bed, and when I got out the bed, both girls was on the floor. Like, literally, like, on the floor, I had somehow, like, yeah, like, literally, everybody, they was on the floor. I had swiped shit off the tables, and I just was like, Emotions, yeah, I, I was throwing it off, bro, and I, I don't act like that. So, and it was, it threw me off. Like, I was really, like, fucked up, and I was just like, man, this, you know, I'm shaking, like, what the fuck, you know? At the time, this, you know, this is my bro. Me and yeah. Dre actually lived together at this time. We lived together. Like, he was, he was my music mentor. I just got out of prison. He came and picked me up from the halfway house. Like, bro, we on this music shit now. We're not robbing. We're not shooting. I need you to be focused. I need you with me. So, right. now I'm rapping. So, I'm, I'm on this shit too, okay? So, when this happened, bro, it threw me off. Like, I was on federal probation, and I still flew out that day flew out that day to Kansas City. That's that's how serious it was to me, knowing I wasn't supposed to be there, fresh out of prison, just did 10 years. You shit could have been 10. 10. Yeah, just did, did 10, 10 straight. This is, I ain't even been out shit. Fuck, a year? Oh, shit. I ain't been out a year. Just did 10, 10, 10 straight. So um, I fly to Kansas City immediately. You know, I'm like, I'm on some street shit at the time. Like, yeah, bro, what's sure. going on? Like, ooh, I'm talking to everybody. And I, I, I mind you, like I said, I knew nobody in Kansas City. I only knew my homeboys that was there with Dre. So I flew in and I started talking to them and all them immediately. And then I just tapped in with one of the dudes that I knew that Dre was real cool with in Kansas City was Rich the Factor. So he was like actually the first. He's a rapper out of, out of Kansas City, a real G out of Kansas City, good dude. And I tapped in with him, and, and, and basically he showed me Kansas City. You know, right. this is what's going on out here, bro. This so is how our, is Kansas City? Because I heard there's some grimy shit going on out there. Uh, like. It's killer city. Killer kill, city, kill, huh? It's killer city. I'm going to keep it 100 in case he don't play. And, um... Um, you know, that's first 48. Every time you turn first 48, you see Kansas City or Tulsa, Oklahoma, both of them. And I be in both of them. And they go crazy. But I, I'm going to keep 100. Kansas City love the Bay Area. That's our cousins. You know, it's certain places that, that, that it's certain pockets in, in this world that love our sound. Yes. Not, not just a, a California, but just a Bay Area sound. You know, California, you know, the LA got the world. You know, we got a sister sound out here, but there are certain pockets of the world, they just fuck with Bay Area. They'd be like, you know, in what, Kansas what City, think, one what of them. What do you think the Bay Area sound is? I mean, I, I, I hear it. I can be like, that's the Bay Area sound. What do you think makes you guys different, you know, than the L.A. sound and the Texas sound? Um, I think a lot of it is, a lot of it is just the game. We got we got a lot. We do in the, in the game. We spit is a lot a lot different the way we the way we orchestrate our words. We we you know we 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 got our own dictionary. We got our own get down. It's it's a, it's a lot of things about the Bay Area that just kind of like separates us. Yeah, ba baby um, Bash uh, warned me, but you haven't said anything. He's like, man. He's like, uh, Jay Diggs a cool motherfucker, man. He said, but if you start saying some crazy ass words. And you don't know him, Gil. Stop him and make sure he tells you because we got our own lingo out yeah, there. Yeah, we, we got our own. Shout lingo. out to Baby Bash. That's man. my bro too. Definitely shout out to Bash, man. We've been doing this forever. He he's one of mine. We from the same place. So yeah, I think uh, I think that yeah, you guys definitely have a different sound. It might be some of the you know the pimping. The it's not the definitely they definitely love right? that. They definitely love that. We are definitely uh, we 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 definitely teach a motherfucker how to make some money with the bitch ass. So what <laughs> what uh what is a young uh. Digs uh bumping back in like let's say in the you know, early mid mid to early eighties when the rap game was very fresh. Um well out there in the Bay Area. So I'm gonna keep it one hundred. You know, I was you know, at that time there wasn't a whole lot to bump, but we had too short. Too short Ooh, is our yeah, godfather. Yeah, so want, so, so too short was the first rapper I ever heard cuss on the record. You understand? So yes. you gotta understand. And, and I'm gonna just tell you, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you something historic about this Bay Area shit that y'all probably ain't never thought about. Do it. So the two longest running rappers right now that's still relevant that still put out records to this day. E from the Bay Area, E forty and, and Too Short, short. from true. the eighties. That's true. Most from definitely. the fucking and still relevant to this yes. day. You feel me? Now they ain't never hit no Jay Z success level with with all the shit, but they've always been in the game. And this is what that independent but shit. You know who they are? Yeah, every boy. Hey, that, you know but I mean? Short got a record. Short got a record. Whatever rapper that ever thought he was gonna be great. 
Yeah. Um, but the consistency over the years, and this is where the independency come in. Because, see, a lot of times, I'm, I'm, I tell people this because I studied the game. A lot of times when you go to the pros in the game, meaning the, these, these major labels, right? right? You go to the pros and you come out hot. Once you fall off over the, down from the pros, they don't respect you no more in the streets with musically. They'll you okay, yeah, he was good. It, it's gone. Yeah. But see, in this independent game, you develop these friendships, these fans like Colts. Like that's why you got these tech nines that's 30 right. years in the game. And you got we got dudes, Andre Nicotina from the Bay Area. You know, the Mac Dre's like these yeah, followings is like cult followings. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Baby bash. Oh, these is like cult Vice followings, bro. Yeah, exactly. And, and and that's that's that independent because when you got the independent, you get to be more up close and personal. You're doing them 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 smaller shows. You going into them smaller cities that ain't no Snoop Dogg gonna walk into. They ain't, they ain't going in no Santa Rosas and 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 all these little ass cuts and these little Fresnos and all these little cities that that a lot of people ain't, ain't making it to. But when you're on an independent level, you sliding through all these cities and you developing a whole different fan base. And that's what come with the Bay Area. Them two dudes been doing it forever. Yeah. And like I say, for um short. Short, short, short is my godfather. Like I say, short. I was listening to short on the junior high school bus, and he was cussing shit out. And, and, and I, I, I never forget. Uh, I was in um, I was in my room. Had my uh, I was playing short. Hell aloud. A song yeah. called Blow Job Betty. <laughs> Hell aloud. Right. So my mom run in the room. What the hell is you playing? My mama's name is Betty. Oh. So the song, and I'm not, you know, I'm not tripping on it like that. I'm just like, this is yeah. the hardest shit I ever heard. He telling the whole story about this girl named Betty giving him blowjobs and all the shit. And bro, I never forget that, bro. She came in, bro, turned off my music, bro. Got to what the hell, you know? Yeah, yeah what the, who, where this, you know? Like I say, he was the first that I ever heard cussing. And then, you know, then came N.W.A. with us. N.W.A. was definitely a movement we fuck with. I fuck, I was a Cuber, though. I fucked with Cube over oh, everybody. Genius, man. Oh, I fucked with Cube. When, when Cube broke away, I broke away, too. That's I, right. I, I, yeah, fucked, yeah, that's <laughs> I right. fucked with Cube. I'm just going to lie. Cube, Cube was my, that was my dog. Hey, so let's talk, uh, shout out to your mama. Uh, seems like a, like a great lady. Actually reminds me of my mom a lot. Uh, it was kind of the same story, believe it or not. So give me a little history of moms, man. Moms, mom's a G my, from shit. way back when. Yeah, moms actually is a G before B. My mom was from the same neighborhood. I'm from the Crest. Like, she started that. You know what I mean? So before I was from that neighborhood, she was from that neighborhood. She had, uh, it's nine of them. She had eight brothers and sisters. And they, like I said, they, they from my neighborhood. So she, um, she, she grew up, she grew up and, and, and seeing all the shit. She grew up seeing all the shit. But her and my dad met in high school. My dad is actually from E40 side of, oh, okay. of, of the town so they they met in high school yeah and um shit they've been together since high school like you know they they graduated and and, and they went and and got married and bought their first house together and all right. the shit and, and got up out the hood yeah they they really literally got up out the hood you know what i mean so they cool. they taught me young that i hey, go you know yeah. you it's more than this shit yeah. than this just this crest shit you. you feel what i'm saying but at the same time she 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 was one of the moms that that, that taught me too Wait, well, you know shut your mouth that's none of your business you gotta be respectful and what happened yeah. oh yeah go kick his ass <laughs> you know what I mean? So I had one of them kind of mamas too. Let's not let's not get that twisted. I want to take it back real quick. You said uh, you was nineteen hitting licks at a, at a pizza spot, right? Um, at a successful lick, what's the profit looking like back then? Um, and are are you got are you timing it? Are you waiting? Okay, let's wait late night when like. Uh, well, well, back then when, when we was doing licks, like I I I, I played this before. One of the, when we was doing pizza places, so right. mind you, just pizza places. So when we was doing pizza parlors, the, the thing about pizza parlors back then, I don't know if they probably still do that. Back then, uh, pizza parlors was good, was big with the sports. Okay. So after baseball games and shit, all the baseball teams on the weekend, they all at the pizza parlors. You know what I mean? You got hell of people in there. So Friday, Saturday, and Sunday back then they wasn't running. Uh, um, the uh, armor trucks didn't run every day like that. It wasn't picking up every day like that. Back in the, in, in, in the early 90s, armored trucks would pick up on certain days of the week. The weekend money would sit there all weekend Ooh, a lot. Okay. So you had Friday, Saturday, and Sunday money in a pizza place. So a Sunday night That's the perfect time would be like an that. excellent time to hit a pizza place. You, like I said, you got all, all these baseball teams, basketball <laughs> teams, football teams, all these people coming through with all these pizza parlors. So... It used to be, a, you know, for a teenager, 
hitting the lick. That was they used to be a nice mind. You probably can catch probably some probably some of the best licks really was in there. It was probably like twenty something, maybe thirty thousand. Thirty thousand? Yeah, yeah. It, they what had, the fuck? They, yeah, they had they had they they would have times like that. And like I said, this would come from the from the weekend. But that was a them was good licks like that. Right. To, to catch one of them was good. Even bank, it was banks sometimes that didn't have that. So but those- but but even but restaurants and 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 stores is known for having. Those thirty k, how many like uh, you guys split it in? In how many ways? Um, well, and I'm let me let, 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 let's 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 keep this one hundred. I'm gonna keep it. It wasn't thirty k all the time. Okay, like, we've been in that piece, was, yeah, yeah, that, yeah was, that was that was one of the nice licks coming out of pizza right. places. But um, so it would be no more than three people. You know, what I mean, the most it would be three. Normally two. That was always my thing. The two, one other person that was really necessary to, to have three people. Um, a lot of times, just depending on how big the place was. Um, so my thing was always, I always wanted one other person. So me and my little cousin Kilo, that was really my road dog. That was your road dog. That was my yeah, me and For Kilo. Sure. That was that was my. He was a little fast, motherfucker. Get over. Talk, it. talk to us. I just about that process. Like, what was the thrill like? What, you, what, was, what was something that would pump you up? Would you need to be high? Need to be drunk? So, so, so with me, you know, the, the very first time, like anything else, of course, you're scared to death. Like, damn, I'm, off, I'm really finna do this shit. So, um, you, you know, the adrenaline is, is different, heart pumping, and you thinking all the shit. You get, first of all, the first thing you thinking is what if, <laughs> what if, what if I get caught? You feel me? So you thinking of all the plays, like what if I get caught? Then you thinking of what if I get away? Yeah. And that's the plan. The whole plan is to always get away. So you know, at, at the end of the day, you gotta know you gotta know what you're getting yourself into. So I, I was already at the point where I, I know what I'm getting myself into, and, and I was I, I'm just was one of those adventurous kind of kids. Like I'm I, I'll try some shit. Yeah. I'll try some shit for advancement. I'm not gonna go jump off bridges and do weird shit. I don't jump out of planes. But if we can get some money. And do some shit like that. I'll definitely go try some shit. So with me, it was it, it was all about okay, we in it. Let's let's really capitalize off this shit. So I was I was one of the ones. I was the type of person. I w- I would get up sometimes and when, first thing I do, I get in my car and I smoke a blunt and I okay go ride shit. I go K shit, looking at shit like oh I found some shit. And I'd be like, I was one of the ones that would tell niggas in the crew, like, ooh, I, I, I think I got one. You feel me? And we'll, we'll put the play together, like, okay, let's do it. Let's go in, you know. And if I could, if I could, I would have somebody outside of my, my situation go in the motherfucker just to make sure for a security, if they got security in there, all that shit, because that's, always, scope it out. that's always a factor. I just would, you know, that, that would be the main thing. Do they got security in that bank or not? That's the main thing you need to know. Um, Cause at one time it was a time I was told there was no security in the bank, and I ran in there and there was security in the bank. Yeah. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So that that that's that's a uh, that's that's one of them things that you definitely need to know. And if had he not been at the door when we ran in the bank, it could have got ugly. Being he was at the door, I was able to get on him immediately. So I got on him immediately and was able to disarm him. But if he'd have been across the bank, and he would have had time to. It, it could have got ugly in there. So it was different situations. You always, that would be the main things, like when knowing that if I go in here, what's going to happen, you know? And our whole thing was keep it under two minutes. Okay. Two minutes, that was the rule. Keep it under two minutes, yeah. So now, did it get easier and easier with time? Was it like, you know, some people wake up in the morning and like, I got to go to work today and do my job. Was that it? Was that your thing when you guys were getting ready for that? Hey, almost. It was pretty much getting like that. It was, it, 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 it's like what anything. Was it, 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 it was pretty much, it was pretty much getting like that. It was pretty much getting to the point where who got the next sweetest lick? Like, you found one? Because we tore the Bay Area up, bro. Like, when I tell you we tore it up every other night on the news. And it wasn't just, you know, like, it, it might. Sometime I would wake up and see the news and be like, Bro, y'all. Oh, who got that one? Oh, y'all didn't tell me y'all. Y'all went on with it. You know what I mean? It, be, it, it was that one. You know, the crew, it just got so so bad. It'd be the, the crew just start breaking off and just linking up with two people and three. And then, okay. yeah. And it, and then, I ain't going to lie, it turned into like an epidemic with my neighborhood. So after the first persons got so caught, bad. after after people start figuring it out, it was coming from us or our neighborhood, it started catching on like, yeah. man, I'm finna do that. I'm finna try that, and it was like everybody doing it. It got to the point it was like so and so a bank got robbed. Y'all do that? Like, no. Did y'all do that? Like, no, nah, bro. She. We now we like, hold on. Who robbed that bank over yeah. there? Mm. At first, we was the only ones doing it. Then out of nowhere, competition. 
copycats. The copycats. And then we it got to the point where they even had some dudes that ran up in a bank, robbed a bank, and then left a hat that said Romper Room on it. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah. They was doing shit like, yeah, it got to that oh. point. It, it literally got to that point. So when it, it, and then after, so when I, when me and Dre, and we caught our case, first thing I'm doing with my crew is telling my, the rest of the niggas on the street, it's over, bro. Like, it's over. Right. Don't, you know what I mean? We, we down, they know, they own to us. And we still had hard heads. It was still niggas in our crew. After after knowing that they connected to us and everything, it still it still got caught up. Got caught up. And more. And like I was literally in jail five, six years. And there was still strings of bank robbers. The younger generation from my neighborhood. Like it, it just turned into like an epidemic yeah, in Northern was, California. That was, that was them uh, you know, doing what the older homie was doing. It went they had they had yeah, exactly. They had they had a, a article like fifty two, did a sting on fifty two people. Behind bank robberies, and but they was you know they would always use our name, but at the end of the day, a lot of that shit wasn't even us. That was after we had already tore shit up, and then everybody else was like, "We want to try." We 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 you bank robbers. Any of the young guys in prison that that came in after you? Oh yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. And how, how were you feeling? Like fuck it, that's on you. Or I mean, you, yeah, I mean, you know, you're in that life, bro. Yeah, that's what it was, bro. Like I said, it became an epidemic for where I was from. So a lot, I know a lot of young dudes that went to jail for a bank robbery. Arm takeover bank robbery. You know, when, when at the time when we did it, it was so fresh. They was used to people going in with notes. Right. So the, the Jesse James takeover that we was doing was all new again. Jesse we, James. We was the reason why they put plexiglass. That's why they start putting plexiglass in California state banks, yeah, banks right? and, and in federal banks. Because our whole style was going in and jumping the counter. we go straight over the counter. Like, it wasn't no... Going to the counter, holding no gun. We we had a counter man who job was to go as soon as we come in, jump straight over the counter. We had a floor man, so once we got control of the counter, so they knew that that was the, that was our style. And once they figured it out and they put it together, that after after all the cases had went, after they start catching us, that was one of the first things they start doing in California is putting up plexiglass in banks to stop people. That's when they did that. Stop people and like I, you, Diggs. So <laughs> taking their money, homie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And were you, were you intelligent with your with your money that you'll make, or you'll blow that shit off? Yeah, like what are you guys we, doing the night of? Let's say we, you guys just hit a lick, got a hundred yeah. racks. What are you guys doing? We was kids, bro. We did all the shit. We just going to buy alcohol, smoke <laughs> weed. Uh, but you know, but we we was fly kids, bro. We bought cars. You know, we did all the shit, clothes. You know, we wasn't we wasn't thinking about the future at the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're not thinking about but the future. more than anything, we was investing in Mac Dre. Okay. That's one thing we was doing. We was investing, and we knew that Dre was the voice for us. So we, whatever Dre needed, we made sure he got, bro. You need some new studio equipment. What you need, bro? We just, you rap, bro. Just rap. We need you to rap. And that's what he did. That's what he did. So that's why I was kind of fucked up that he got caught up, because he really got caught up and and and, and went to a prison for his homeboys. And, oh, shut the, and shut the fuck up. Yeah, yeah. and shut the fuck up. The whole time, yeah, that that that's very rare. Yeah, he was a he was the face, right? So when when he passed away, how did you guys keep it going? Because a lot of times you lose you lose we, a character like that, like in the we, game. We we we, we we created this nation. This nation was instead of us saying, okay, who's gonna be the next rapper to take over? We reached out and we brought the whole Bay Area together. That's what this nation is. So me, my cousin Kilo, Miami the most, Uncle Miami, the rest of the nation, Doobie and them, we reached out to other artists in the Bay Area. We from Vallejo, so we reached out to Richmond, Oakland, Frisco, Antioch, everywhere. And we got the hottest talents. That's where you got, that's where the, if you ever heard of Mr. Fab, that's where Mr. Fab came from. We brought him in the Thiers Nation. Um, we, we brought Keek the Sneak in the Thiers Nation. We, we reached out to all the sections around our area, and then we created Thiers Latin. Thiers Latin. We went and got Gold Toes. We, toes. we brought to toes, toes over. Toes put the movement together. He reached out to all the Latins, and we created Thiers Latin. So this movement is bigger than motherfuckers think. Yeah. Bro, this movement is, and, and it's been going on for years. And, and you know, like anything else, with the music, you know, music gonna go up and go go down. But a movement 
that was created like this nation is here forever. Our movement is here forever. It's going to be this nation, this Latin forever, but it's right. too many and, of us. And talk, talk to me about that. It's a, it's a beautiful thing that you guys have in the, in the Bay Area and up north, the relationship between, you know, black, black and, and brown. brown. Yeah, yeah, you better say it. You better say it. And, and a lot of that is contributed to Gold Toes. Shout out Toes. That's something that Toes been pushing for, for many, many years, and, and we jump right on with it. And, and that's one of the things, like, I, I, where, where, where I'm from, and, and, and I love it, bro. The Mexican community loves this nation. They love our movement. They love Mac Dre. They love J Diggs. I go do shows, and my whole shows be Mexican sometimes. Yeah. Like Fresh, know all the shit. Like it's not, you know. And I, I know the politics. You know, I know all the politics uh, that, that goes on right. and, and, and with with the Mexican community. But we don't indulge. In you don't that. look for that reason. Yeah, we hate. we don't indulge in that. Right. It's you know it is what it is, and and, and we. We get the love, bro. Everywhere I swear to God, and everywhere I go in California, that's probably one of my leading uh, fan bases. It's probably Mexican. Oh, for sure, homie. For it's pretty, I get, I get, I get so much love from Mexicans, bro. It's, 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 it's in, a, in and listen in California, in Nevada, in uh, New Mexico, Arizona, Texas. Any hip hop show, it's gonna be majority of Rasa in there. Do it. That is it. Up. We 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 are consumer based. We 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 are that, and and we appreciate that, man. We appreciate the you know, especially we'll show love if we like you as an artist. We're gonna show love yeah. and all that. That color line doesn't really matter as much anymore, which is a great thing. Like uh, when my co-host here, he's younger than me. You know, in, in my generation, it was yeah, it, it started becoming racial because of the politics. You know, but now what we're trying to do is push the the line where nah, homie, yeah, we can disagree, but we can disagree as men. Have a conversation and talk about it, not scream at one another like kids. And if there is a misunderstanding, all right, well, let's talk about it. Homie. Let's let's get it in because this is important not just for us but for our kids, man, our futures. Definitely, definitely. And you, uh, with that being said, you we already know how 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 wild these kids is these days. And that's kind of what I like like what I was trying to set an example for with this whole whack one hundred shit. You know, these days nowadays, uh somebody say something disrespectful on the internet and they mama house might get shot up. Yeah. You feel okay. me? That's where these kids is at now. And, and and motherfuckers is dead and in jail behind some shit they could have punched some motherfucker in the mouth for. Right. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to punch whack one hundred in the mouth. Let's fight like grown <laughs> ass men. You feel what I'm saying? Let's you 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 like to fight, you know, you you knocked a few dudes out, you tough, you yeah, talk he, your he shit. Wants to beat me up right now. I'm I'm the one I'm the one on his list. I'm like, man, let me catch that fake. I'm gonna catch your fake. Yeah, Tell yeah. him I I want your face. Well, that was your fate first. I mean, yeah. yeah. If he was a barber, he'd have a bad uh, Yelp uh, record because he has many appointments and he's never caught him. Yeah. But 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 see, the thing about me, my whole thing is, right, is with me. It's a it's a whole it's a whole super respect thing, right? Yes. Dude jumped the gun with me, and the reason why I'm so persistent. If this would have been just a regular, uh, 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 your mama a bitch shit, by now I probably would have been over it chasing this nigga but the reason why i'm so persistent right now and and and, and addressing this shit smart even doing podcast anybody know me bro this is i did more podcasts in the last month than i did probably in my career i get called for them every day but this is not what i do i'm right. really not a rapper so when this shit happened you know dude um whack 100 he started um putting shit out on the internet that was just totally false yeah and, and when you start doing that shit and you damaging somebody's career and, and, and their name and shit like that, Perfect. like that's a, that's a whole different situation. So that's why I address the shit because the way I'm addressing it because dude said some real foul shit with my name and I'm I'm stand up and I stand on everything that I say and I stand on everything I believe and I'm like if you if you got something negative with my name in it, paperwork and all, please put it on the internet. Right, like you say you got. You feel me? Please put it on the internet so the world can see. This is me. This is how I get down. And, and his thing is, he's so used to, to to running in, bumping into people, and then he go get some information on them and clown them right. and do and all this shit. Yeah, something. well, yeah, I found out this, I found out that about you. Well, he went and tried to go get some information on me, and he found out, no, I'm not the motherfucker he thought I was. So I, I'm, my whole thing, and then next thing you know, he talking about, he said I touched a little girl. I was touching a little girl. Oh, I got to work. I got to work. Bro, if you had that kind of paperwork, that shit would have been. Yeah, what are you talking about, bro? It don't exist. But people fall for it. it yeah, and that's why I got to do this. That's why I got to come. 
come and I got to speak and I got to show my face and I got to tell my story and I got to let people see who I am before an asshole like this try to diminish my character to somebody don't even know me. So then they say, hear my name. Oh, ain't that the dude that didn't touch the 13 year old? Right. Yeah, nah, fuck no. Nah. That's the part we, people don't understand. Yeah. So that's why, that's why I want to have this fade with dude. So everybody can ask, man, what they fight about? Oh, man, Wax said some bullshit and Diggs addressed it. Yeah. And, and Period. It's got to be addressed to a point where it's, it, that no, when that shit, because it's on the internet. He can't take that back. Right. It's on the internet. You feel what I'm saying? And and when you got a voice that powerful. Yes. And you use it like that, that shit is fucked up. Yeah. And if somebody, if you don't stand up for yourself, like, because I used to be the one like, man, I ain't going to fuck the internet. I don't care what they said. But now I see. I see people just say shit on the internet, and now I have fans asking me, oh, bro, I heard uh, you lying Mac Dre up. Like, motherfucker, do you know my story? Oh, man. Do you know the Mac Dre story? Right. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> that shit breaks my heart when a motherfucker say something like that. Like, we spent 20 years yeah. building this shit, and personal. here 20 years later, somebody, all of a sudden, somebody want to all of a sudden make up a story. Oh, yeah, you had something to do with killing Mac. I'm like, man, get the fuck out of here. Same shit Suge had to go through with Pac. Right. You know? And here it is, they finally find out who really killed Pac. That wasn't even world news. Right. How that ain't world news? Yeah. How when they found out who killed Tupac, that wasn't world news when everybody fucking convicted Suge in the streets yeah. of killing Pac for years. Right. That should have been world news. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. The, conv- the killer of Tupac has been solved. It's still people to this day don't even know that, that murder solved. Right. You feel me? But that's the internet. That's what the internet can do. It but, convicted Suge years ago for that this, shit. This is my question. For somebody as big as bad as WAC 100 that's calling out names, wanting to catch face with everybody, why is he avoiding that fate with Jay Diggs? That's my question. Why I thought you, it was going to be I is? thought it was gonna be easy because he, you know, he went to shit. In. I'm in California. Matter of fact, I'm in L.A., in Hollywood area. Like, I'd I, I be out. I, I was at Lakers games against the Warriors. I, I went to two of them games right here in L.A., all this shit, and I and that's all I asked for was the fade. Like you know, we can do this shit like men, grown men. Let's do it for the for the for the culture. Let's show these kids that we ain't gotta kill each other. You feel me? And they love to see it. I'm with it. I'm with all the shit. <laughs> I'm with all the shit. So so my thing is, he gotta see me. I would like to. My thing. I w- I want to set it up on some man shit, because if we don't set it up on some man shit, that mean I gotta get on him wherever I see him at. Right. And right. that's when shit get messy. But it's going to get like that no matter what. Like, so we can do it on some man shit. We can do it like the, with the fight dude. My, like, my dude and them, they trying to set it up uh, for, uh, matter of fact, the end of this month. Well, we can do pay preview and everything. But I just told him, no, my only thing is I want to do UFC shit. I don't want to do the, just the goofy-ass boxing gloves. I, I want to do some real. So you're I, trying, I, trying, no, I'm, I want to I hurt dude. I, 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 I really want to beat dude up. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's going to be fun. We're the same size. But you never yeah. even met the guy, right? Never. Never a day in my life. Dude, dude, dude went bad on me. He went bad on me. Um, Actually, um, it was behind Blue Da Vinci. Right. If you, if you want to go to, the, yeah, to that, let's go into that story. So, so basically... What was going on? Blue Da Vinci from BMF um, and WAC, you know, they had did an interview. They was on, on Clubhouse or whatever, and they was talking about um, um, Blue and Blue Case. And, and he was and WAC was, was defending Blue, saying Blue, you know, Blue not a rat, ain't no paperwork on Blue, blah, 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 whatever, all the case. Everybody trying to say this about Blue and all the shit. And um, he was defending him. And, you know, I, some pe- you know, as soon as that happened, everybody sent it to me because everybody, you know, Blue used to be like my little brother. Blue used to live with me. I used to fuck with BMF very, very tough. Big Meech is a good friend of mine. So um, then about a few days after that, Blue went and did an interview on one of the podcasts, and he was telling the story, and they asked Blue. They said, well, Blue, how did the, um, the story of you become, how did the, it come out? People start calling you a rat. Who started that? And uh, Blue said, uh, it started behind Big Meech. He said, so Big Meech called Jay Diggs, and then he said it disrespectful. Bitch ass Jay Diggs. He got mad and said it disrespectful. And he told Jay Diggs that I was a rat bastard um, because I had just went to court that day. And the same week that I went to court, information they had the feds when they found this limo from four years ago um, that had this million dollars in it and blah, blah, blah. So they trying to say that I told on this limo. That was the story that he was telling, Man. okay? So when he told his story, I, I heard the story. I listened to it. I'm like, no, nah, that's that's not how the story went. So uh, the dudes who want some dudes from Clubhouse called me for an interview because he mentioned my name. So I said, okay, I'm going to tell the story how it really went. I said, the story went the day Blue went to trial. 
Oh, uh, with the court, he got his time. He called me that day after court. I'm talking to him on the phone. He telling me I just got five years, blah, blah, blah. Literally while I'm on the phone with him, I get a three-way call from another one of my homeboys from BMF, who's Baby J. And I click over, and he's like, Diggs, Meech want to talk to you. So he got Meech on from jail. So I got Meech and Blue on both lines. So Meech come in, and Meech say, Diggs, you know Blue went to court today? I'm like, yeah. He say, man, Blue's a rat bastard. I said, whoa, whoa, Meech, what you talking about? I got Blue on the other line. He said, well, you can click over and tell him I told you that. He said, Blue took a, a safety valve. Um, uh, he took a, a, um, a, um, a safety valve, and he debriefed. And then nobody on that level in my crew did that shit. He's a rat bastard. So I click back over. I tell Blue what Meech say. Meech, Blue pleading his case. No, nah, I ain't telling nobody, blah, blah, blah. I did this. I, so I go back and forth for like 30 minutes. But at the end of the time, Meech, I'm not fucking with Blue. So, bam. So immediately, I got to back up off Blue. Even right. though that's my brother, that's my bro. Until this shit get figured out and settled. Like I say, I just told you how I feel about that shit. And Blue know how I feel. Blue lived with me, so he know how I feel. So when that happened, that conversation happened, I pushed the brakes like, whoa. Now we went from talking every other day to he not even calling my phone. Or I'm not answering when he calling nothing to us. This shit got to get figured out. So here we is, fast forward. That shit was back in 2008 when that phone call happened. Okay? So now... Through all that time, Blue had been getting called a rat, getting called a rat. Now, you know, he's not around the BMF series, none of this shit going on. Lil Meech don't fuck with him. They didn't fell out, all the shit. So when he, when when I tell the story, I tell, I tell, um, I say, y'all can tell, if Blue want to clear his name, tell Wack to ask Blue to get his debriefing paperwork because he debriefed. That's what he did. He even said, if you listen to his interview, he said he went and debriefed. Get his debriefing paperwork. That's not public information. Let's see what he said to the federal government when he said in that debriefing room. That'd tell it. That's because if you know anything about a safety valve, that's when you have to go, in order to get a safety valve, you have to go sit down with the government. Give him and basically, they're going to ask you a series of questions, and they got to be happy with your answers. And then they'll go back to the judge and say, Judge, we were happy with our, our meeting with so-and-so. Yes, go ahead and give him his safety valve. Now it's called a safety valve because you're safe. We're going to give you your five years that you asked for. But if we need you to come testify in trial, we're going to open up that valve. Oh, shit. You get it? Yeah. If we need you to, hopefully everybody will plea out and you don't have to come in here and take this stand. But if we need to open up that valve, we will. So... He, he took a safety valve. What he said in that room to get his safety valve, what he, we don't know. So he was never said to have gotten on the stand and said, oh, he sold me dope or I sold him dope. That's not the snitching he did. You understand? So I was breaking that whole story down. So when I broke that story down, some, and I said, like I said, I said, told Wack to ask Blue. Somebody told Wack, hey, Wack, um, Diggs said ask Blue, uh, woo -woo. Jay Diggs. Who is Jay Diggs? I don't know no Jay Diggs. He running my name, man. Fuck Jay Diggs, man. Fuck his mama. Woo, woo, woo. Tell his mama suck dick. She a janitor and blah, blah. He just went all the way in because somebody told him that I said, ask blue. And the words, like, no disrespect, yes. none of the shit. And then right after he did that, he ran to the internet and posted a uh, word on the street, Jay Diggs married to a man, like posted this on his page. What the fuck? I had never talked to this man a day, never disrespected this man a day in my life, said the exact words. It's everything I just told you is on the internet. It can be verified. Anybody who want to verify the story, y'all can look it up where he start where where it all started at. Blue Da Vinci and Wack 100 goes in on Jay Diggs. That's where it started at. So at the day that he did that shit was actually the the, the, the anniversary of my son's death day. Oh man, I'm sorry to hear that. Okay. I appreciate it. And I don't fuck I don't fuck with nobody on that day. My kids don't even call me on that day. It's just me and my son. And some backwoods. And we we rock out that day. So I'm getting all these people sending this shit to me this day. I had to block all that out. Still, you know, stay focused on me and my son. And then the next day I open up all that shit and this is what I get. So when I get it, you know, and during all this shit, he said he wanted to fade. He wanted to see me. So I, I instead of going straight to the internet, I called one of my homeboys who knew Wack. And I said, man, tell Wack I want to accept the fade. Let's line it up. Like me. He disrespected me, disrespected my mama. I need that. Prison shit. Right. 
prison shit. Meet me in a cell. And have have you ever spoke to Wack One Hundred? And, and never. He won't even talk to me. So okay. I sent him. I, I sent him. Um. Um. I sent Zo. Um, the, the, message. The, the, the message to form the tell whack. So he sent it to whack. Whack reply, oh man, uh, tell dude to stand down, man. You know, woo, woo, woo. my, my Zo just hit him and say, hey, hey whack, um, my um, my nigga Diggs want to catch that fade, bro. Woo, woo, woo. We want to set it up ASAP. Oh, he stand down. He don't dictate nothing here. I see dude when I see dude. That's right? all he said. Yeah, that's all he said. So he sent me the text of what Wack said. So when I seen it, I posted the text. Like, bam, man, Wack. Oh, and I tell everybody, tell Wack, bring his ass outside. You know, that's my thing. Like, come on, no, no. We didn't already start it. You said what you said. Let's get to it. So that's when I did the little videos. And I thought, come on, Wack, let's man to man. Let's do it like two men. So the next thing you know, he talking about, oh, man, J, man, J Diggs, text me up. He sent me these texts talking about he pulled up to my studio and whoop whoop this and and I told him uh, no, no no talking about he was gonna pull up and well, anyway it was some crazy ass texts right. I don't know but I, from what I understand it's him and him and him and his his girlfriend Beast be doing this shit all the time they text these fake conversations <laughs> yeah. and then they they run this for yeah. content yes they yes. do a lot of fake shit for yes. content I'm finding this all out. I don't yes. I don't even know but I find out that they do a lot of whole shit a lot of fake shit for content. Fake fights, fake arguments, and all the shit. So he 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 running this. This is his only response to all to me asking for a fade is I gave him the address. I told him to pull up. He said he was in L.A. He sending me uh, uh, videos of fights. Like I didn't even have this nigga. Number. I ain't never text whack one hundred in a day in my life. And I told him even after he did that, I said, man, put the number up. Call the number. Tell the fans to call the number. How do you know it's me? Where what made you think it was me? Right. Oh, so so anybody just texts you and you just start texting back and you say, bro, well, how do you verify that? You didn't verify, you didn't get FaceTime, you pick up the phone, you just let a nigga text you and say, oh, this J Diggs. Come on. Yeah. So yeah, that was all that was all propaganda just for a reply. So so my whole thing is, like I said, I just really been on this on, on, on some less less line it up. So the dudes out, they ready to do a pay preview. The dudes that be doing all the little fights, they did the Bosco shit before. They got okay, at me. Okay, so so you're you're ready to go ahead and do a pay per view with Wack? Fuck yeah! Got to. I think this is a perfect opportunity to call them out because based off what happened yesterday, it's only obvious that Wack 100 and his little Tea Party crew. Um, I mean they they a big fan of the podcast. I mean they definitely watching. I'm pretty <laughs> sure Wack 100 is watching right now. Uh, that's what I'm saying. So Wack, let let's know, let's let's let's, let's, up, let's line it up, bro. Let's 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 line it up. You already know what this is, man. Uh, and, and I'm in LA right. Now, bro, I'm in LA right now as we speak, and I've been trying to get your attention. And I got your attention. You hear everything I be saying, bro. You pay attention, and, and let's just do this like men, bro. Like I said, let's just do this like men. We ain't gotta do no whole lot of back and forth. We ain't gotta do nothing. You know my homeboy Zoe number. You can call Zoe, and you text Zoe or nothing. Say, hey, bro, look, let's line it up like men. I don't know weird shit. Let's you know, let's let's set it up, bro, and let's just do some fly shit. No woofing. No, yeah, no, no, let's just do nothing some, for the internet. Nothing let's, for the internet. Let's do some fly shit and let's get this shit over with. You know, I got to do this for my mama. My mama told man, me to whoop your ass. Hey, like I said, shout out to your yeah. mama. <laughs> yeah, man. mama said knock you video. out, nigga. Oh, hey, you, hey, whose idea was that, dude? Yeah. It's this fucking. No, that that, oh. that 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 was actually that was actually. My mama, like that's how my mama is. My mama is like that. My mama didn't told me to kick a few people ass, and that's just what happens. <laughs> mama put you on its own. Like I can't do that. I can't do nothing but what she say. I'm a mama's boy, period. That's right. So, so I, that shit hit me in a whole different way. Like that, he don't understand what that lady mean to me. So for, for him to, you know, to just get the hollering fuck my mama. Do you think it's a shit. shame that how much drama he brings just for, I mean, views or for? Well, Content or you know, what is it, bro? you know, on. my thing is my thing. You know, this is what I told somebody else. I told somebody else that I think he figured out from his from his uh, his, his other buddy, yeah. uh, six nine. Yeah, he figured sure. out how to Trolling manipulate. Game. Yeah, he figured out how to manipulate the internet, and it's the only way he gonna get some fame anyway. What else is he gonna be famous for? So he he he, he getting his five minutes of fame from being a, a bitch ass nigga that just runs his mouth. And 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 until somebody punch him in it and shut him down, he gonna do that. He gonna get his fame. So he he he, he doing what he seen another dude get rich from. Right. And right now, a lot of dudes seeing that. They they, they every a lot of dudes is seeing. Uh, it's starting to be a little epidemic of, of these of this 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 trolling and and disrespectful ass shit on the internet just to get views and likes. Like you, you dudes is sacrificing their whole manhood and, and, and who they supposed to be for views and likes, but that's what the world is these days. You know, I I, I could never be on that level, but if that's what people want to yeah. do, the crazy part is he accuses everybody that ever like goes back on him to cloud chase. 
<laughs> and he and he's the one that's you know going back and forth, starting the drama. Because if you want some grown man shit, you know you want some grown man stuff. I mean, you don't you don't talk to somebody like that. You don't bring somebody's mother up like that. That's some shit you do in fucking elementary school, brother. And when you do that in elementary school, it's a fight. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. a fight. <laughs> you know? And my thing is, he talked like he liked to fight. He always talk about his hands. And what do you do? I'm with that shit. I like that shit. Like that's what I'm saying. Let's do it. Let's do it for the people. One time, I done been in sales with. Several niggas, and I ain't never been whooped. Hey. So let's let's get to it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you, yes. you you heard it here first. Yeah, listen, man. To me, he's trying to tell me that shit. I got I got forty other people who want to do the same thing, especially when you're in podcasting. They're always yeah. they're always somebody trying to do it. <laughs> I, he tried calling in yesterday. I think he got a he got a, a verbal whipping because. What they what they like to do on Clubhouse is they like to scream at each other, over scream, start disrespecting one another, and saying all kind of foul shit. But nah, man, we're we're here trying to have a real grown full conversation. I mean, and and you coming in just shows that, man. We 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 on some brown and black, yeah. You know, coalition just, shit. I mean, like, look, people love it or not. Right off the bat, obviously we brown, you black. Do you feel the love? Or I feel what's, the love. what's tell me, tell bro, me, I would, like, I would, tell I would, the audience how you feel, bro. I, I definitely feel the love, bro. Let's first of all, you you, you see how I came in here. Yeah, ain't no man. security with me. Ain't none of that shit, man. I hop right off a plane. We got him outside. <laughs> I, 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 I hop right off a plane and come in here, bro. If I felt it was anything, any tension, any weird shit, anything, I would have came different. I definitely got a mob. Um, and that's just how I am, bro. I be all over this country, bro. I'm tapped in with everybody. I'm tapped in with, been tapped in with LA for years. I've been tapped in with the Spanish community for years. Like I said, I'm, 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 I'm comfortable, very, very comfortable around Mexican community. This is nothing new. I got a Spanish, half Spanish son, so this ain't nothing that's new. Right. <laughs> you know, this, Boy, that's what this, I'm talking this, this, about. This bro. ain't nothing new to me, bro. Um, so for 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 me. It's it's regular, bro. This 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 is what we do. You you be surprised. A lot of people, and I know I know that the tension is different in Southern California, and, and that's crazy because we so close, but yeah. so far, yes. and everything that got to do with our culture, Northern and Southern California, yeah. like that shit is crazy. How we are almost the, the, the total opposite. I mean, it, it is it is in some spots, but I mean here in LA, bro. When it comes to blacks and and, and the Mexicans, it's all love as well. You get me? Yeah. Like, I mean, man, I have a lot of black homies that I'm super cool with. Like, those are my dogs. You know, I can tap in with them right now. But I feel like that's something that Wack 100, for whatever reason, he's trying to push. He's trying to make it a racial thing, but that's not the case, you know? Like I said, I mean, I just feel that Wack 100 just acting out of line. That's why we just addressing just what he said. You know, Period. That, that, that's, that's Period. how we want, we but, want but, and, and, and to keep it 100, to keep it 100, that other dude need to be dressed just as hard as him. He he shouldn't get no motherfucking no, slack. Not. Somebody need to find out who the fuck he is. He he need to come outside too. Beast, whatever he is, bring your bitch ass outside. Those guys you are need just, to, yeah, trolls, post brother. who you is, man. He got one picture. You know I you know I, I follow you on Instagram. You know I've been waiting. Yeah. yeah, you already know. Yeah, if you're really about got, that, I got some little. I got some. Who you are. I got some little homeboy want to beat you up. My beef ain't with you, but you gonna get beat up too because you talk too much. Hey, but don't, don't you see? <laughs> and I see this a lot. I see it where a lot of brothers, not a lot, but a good chunk, will support Wack regardless of what he does. Oh yeah, you know. It's, that's that's you know, and, and you know a lot of people gonna swing on nuts because of fame, and, and you know it's just like a lot of the dudes. That, and shout out to Clubhouse. I, I'm not here to disrespect everybody on Clubhouse. I know people get at me every day. I'll be turning interviews down, yeah, and that's just because of the way the platform is designed. I, I don't like how that shit is, but um, a lot of dudes right now, you know, and and and, and they, they 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 swing on that nut because they trying to get. A platform for themselves. So they, of course they using Bozo to to help them get a platform on their own. Like okay, he come in my room, I get to get the views. People want to come in, and people won't even only listen to do it to hear the stupid shit he gonna say. They don't yeah. literally listen to him because they like him. They don't listen to him because they like him. I got five hundred people a day send me the bullshit that he say. Go on there just to f listen to him to send some bullshit over to yeah, me. But like, he's a very sensitive guy, man. You say anything about him, he gets real sensitive, which is funny. Cause he's talking shit about everybody else. You say, "Oh, he's been so butthurt about yesterday's conversation," and we kept it respectful. We kept it on, on some G stuff. But as soon as somebody starts talking, you know, to me is this, Dicks. If you're having a conversation with somebody, even if you're having some kind of debate, right? The minute you got to call that person out the name, is the minute you lost that debate. Is the minute you can't continue to have that conversation as a man. The minute you start calling somebody a bitch, yeah, all this. They sent me that interview you did with him. They sent me that shit immediately. <laughs> What, what was your take on that? I laughed. I cracked up, man. I, I see how he loses his composure. 
he, he lost it. He lost it. Yeah, it, it was yeah. only a matter of time. I'm like, yeah, let, let's see how long it takes for him to lose it. Hey, hey, and he lost. Just keeping it, it one hundred with him. But but you know what? Aside from that guy, homie, I, I let, let's uh, let's continue the conversation. Uh, what you got going on? I know you got a you got a show to do. You're you're you're, you're uh, kind of laying over here today, on, and then you're gonna go to the show. On. Before we go to that, I got to let y'all know, y'all. I got a new single out called Three Finger Whack. Oh, I'm disrespectful as fuck. I'm gonna stay disrespectful until dude come face me. Like period. Three Finger Whack. It's on all platforms right now. The video had like over a half a million in in a month. So yeah, yeah it's almost it, at six hundred thousand right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, the month. So it, 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 it's it's a good song. What, like what, what, what's uh, what's why, why is it called Three Finger Whack? Three homie? Finger Whack. Uh, oh, because I found out. See, you know, it's crazy. I didn't really know who Whack was, like that. You know, I knew who he was. I heard him, but I, I didn't know really who he was until I, I found out more about him in the last two months than I ever even cared to know. Right. But one of the things I found out is he like fingers in his backside. Oh. <laughs> I, it's crazy. I, I ran across, you know, fans, they gonna send you all the shit, like yeah, you say. Yeah. They send him all the shit. That's how he get all his information. He, he, he find out somebody's name and then all the people that don't like him send all the information. Well, that's what they did to him. When, when, he, when, he, when he threw my name in the streets, everybody starts sending me all, it's so much more, it's so much oh, more. I ain't God. even finished with it. I ain't finished He's with it. just starting. I just started. It's, that was part one. But yeah, that's what they did. They threw me up. Everything I needed to know about his situation. Like, okay, this is the dude that, that just disrespected you, Diggs. And I'm like, damn, this, 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 this him? This him? And it just hit me from everywhere. Like, damn, how could you ever try that with me? And I'm solid in these streets. You, you go run my name, bro. You're not going to find none of that weird shit. Ain't nobody beating me up. Ain't nobody playing in my ass. Ain't none of this weird <laughs> shit going on on the internet with me. I ain't no rat. I ain't never told on nobody. I ain't none of that, bro. None of that. So when he when he figured out that he couldn't find nothing on me, nothing on me, right. then he he don't want to talk to me. Oh, don't run, don't say his name, don't bring I'm clout chasing. No, I'm not clout chasing. I need to address the elephant in the room. All the shit that you said from the beginning. That's all. So I'm disrespectful as fuck until you face me, bro. I know you're gonna see this. Let's oh, just get this up. Oh, he's watching it right now. Let's get this he's, up. He's watching it right now. Let's get this up. He's watching it, uh, you know, and He'll 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 go on clubhouse and talk all the madness stuff and, and do all kind of stuff you know, that, that's what he does homie. Um, it it seems like just a lot of hot air just to get uh to get people riled up and to try to try to make content out of it. But it's a shame homie. It's a shame, but you know it, it is what it is. But now now let's talk about what you got going on. Uh, no wait. As far as the video, how long did you set up the video before you actually shot it? Because I saw the barrier come out hard probably, for you homie. Probably about a week. So I was, you know, when a lot of shit was going on, you know, I, I live I live in California and I live in Hawaii. Okay. I got a home in Hawaii, too. So I'm back and forth, back and forth. I'll be back in Hawaii in two days, actually. I'm back and forth. So a lot of the time I was over in Hawaii. That's what I'm saying. He had a, made up this whole story about I'm texting him that I said I was in L.A. and all this shit. Like, I had never even left Hawaii at this time. And I said it. I'm like, when I leave Hawaii, you'll know. So when I left Hawaii and I got back to the Bay, as soon as I got back to the Bay, I basically did a little, a little, little video saying that, hey, I'm home. And, and I'm really ready to address the situation. And I was like, you know, I'm finna do some music. So I just, you know, that was probably about, not here, yeah, probably about a week, probably about a week before I, I, I just basically just set it up. It wasn't even nothing. I just told them where I was shooting at. And, 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 and my section came out. They they fucked with me in the van. That's what he found yeah. out. He thought I was really you know, like a nobody. He found out like I got a, a movement behind right. me for where I'm right. from. <laughs> so, same, same here, homie. We're on the same boat. We got a lot of... We got a lot of support from our people, brother. Hell yeah, and I see it, and I, and I, and I love to see it. I love to see that shit. I, I, I was, I, I thought that was pretty dope. You feel me? And and and, you, and it's just somebody do got to be the voice. You know, somebody got to speak up for the bullshit when you see it. But definitely, 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 somebody need to address. It. And dude, it's supposed to be a south sider. Supposed to be, but at the end, I say he's a ghost. He's a troll. Doesn't say where he's from. Doesn't say what his name is. So it is what it is. I mean, because there's no listen. There is no guy who is a solid individual that will talk like that. That will disrespect somebody's wife. That will disrespect somebody's kid. That will sit there and and, and go on wax side and say all the stuff that he says. There's no way the guy is that. Because if he was, he would have came out already. And the reality is. To me, he's just a troll. That's why I don't even acknowledge him. He's just somebody who's just trying to get clout as much as he can, but at the same time, hide who he is and where he is. Yeah. So it is what it is. So what's up? What you got going on? Uh, what you got going on? What's, what's the next concert coming in, brother? I'm, 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 bro. I'm here tonight and out of here first thing in the morning, six o'clock flight. I'm flying into Kansas City, and uh, Kansas City and Lawrence, Kansas. Then the very next day, I'm 
Back to Hawaii. I'll be Hawaii Hawaii. Life, huh? oh, it's, it's I'm beautiful. Jealous, it, it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I can't complain. Yeah, I got I got a whole movement in Hawaii, man. So I'm 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 in and out of there every second. And uh, so you got a room for Gil over there? For yeah. Hawaii? Anytime you want to come, bro. Listen. Anytime you want to come to Hawaii, you tap in with me, bro. That's definitely my island, bro. I got the oh, yeah. Oh hell, that's what I, I'm yeah. talking about. Honolulu, this. Honolulu. You come to Honolulu, bro. Yeah, I'm there. I'm there. I got I got a whole family there. I got I got kids there. All the shit. I got I got I got a movement there, so I'm I'm in and out. As a matter of fact, I got a show in Hawaii in Jul, 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 July first. July. What's 1st. the fan base looking like in Hawaii? Uh, it's, it's sweet, bro. Hawaii Hawaii come out, man. They they cracking. You know, it's 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 a big mixture in Hawaii, but they also got a big military presence. You oh, feel that's me? Right. Yeah, they got that's a big right. military presence out there too. So so we got the locals, then they got the military, and then you got the you got the um the tours. Right, so it's 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 cool, bro. It's it's really a vibe, and then like you ain't hearing no gunshots and all that shit around in Hawaii. Hawaii, they like to fight. They like you gonna fight. You catch you a fight in Hawaii. You ain't got. That's what you gonna see. That, that, that club get active. You gonna catch a fight. You ain't gonna get shot up. That's or right. None that's of that. The way shit, it should bro. be. Yeah, man. Oh, it's cool, man. Like these days, man. This shit. Oh, I actually just lost a uh, a friend of mine. He was he was he was a uh, walking a, a artist to the car. Just last week in Kansas City and got killed. They trying to kill oh, the, the rapper. They didn't kill. They shot six people, killed three, and hit my hit my partner. He ain't doing nothing but doing his job, working security at the club, man. And, and they they killed him another day. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. Killed brother. three people. Yeah, bro. That's what I'm saying. Like they they, they reckless. They they reckless yeah, with this shit. Like yeah. you know. They think it's a game. Yeah, get get your man though. You know more than anything, it's just how many civilians. Right, civilians to get killed. You know, I know the street game. You know, it's gonna happen. You in the street, street shit happen. But it's so many civilians that's that's getting knocked down um, behind the streets. You know, that don't deserve. You know, there's some people. It's a lot of people that don't deserve that shit. And that's where that's where that's where um, a lot of these young kids is blowing it at, bro. They 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 over overkill, overkill. Get your man. <laughs> well, with, with that being said, Jay Diggs, I want to thank you so much for coming out, homie. Uh, and blessing our platform, man. Oh, re- re- really, overall, talking some real positive stuff, giving some history of of where you came from, Mac Dre. Like I said, shout out to your mama, man. I love her, man. Hey, I, big I, money. I, yeah, uh, you can go ahead, look at the camera over there, give your shout outs, give your whatever you got to do, homie. That's you right there. Also, uh, first of all, shout out Go Toes, man, making this happen, making yes, the sir. call, man, and plugging us in, bro. It's a pleasure. Thank oh, you for, for having sure, me, bro. For on sure, your thank you, to, to, bro. You know what I mean. Definitely, and uh, you know, and like I say, if anybody that's misinterpreting this, this for clout chasing, this ain't got nothing to do with clout chasing. The story I just told, really, I was just really trying to get a point across. And and, and, and if you have heard some of the bullshit rumors, do your homework on Diggs, and you'll find out who I am, man. Don't don't believe the bullshit you hear on the internet. And I'm very researchable. And I appreciate anybody that's tapped into my movement and anything I got going on. And, and, and definitely, definitely respect. Your whole movement and everything you, you got going on, man. You, man. Brown and black, homie, all day long. Yes, sir, man. We're going to keep pushing that movement forever. Absolutely. With that being said, people, we out. You guys know what it is. and uh, uh no, We ain't moving. stopping, brother. We ain't stopping. That's right.